So it's finally here. The second part of the DLC that we had to pay 30 bucks in advance for like it was some form of Kickstarter. Now of course, I've already done a review on the Isle of Armor, so if you want to hear my full thoughts on that, then click off this video and go watch that. But to summarize, I felt that going through the DLC route was ultimately a good thing, but by itself it wasn't worth the $30 price tag. But we finally got the full thing in the month of Spoops. Sayonara, November gang! Spoopy King is now my best friend! Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. But is it really worth the $30 price tag? Well, let's find out. So upon arriving to the Crown of Tundra, you meet Peony and Piana. One a loving father, and the other the prime example of teenage angst. After getting her attention, she convinces me to distract her father, who then gets mad and distracts himself by fighting me. Good job there, buddy. After the fight, she manages to skedaddles and ends up in the Max Lair. With her father, you try to find her only to have Peony run off by himself. Eventually you find her, and she tells you that she has no interest in hanging out with her father because she's an asshole. You arrive telling the news, and he's dead. Nah, I'm just kidding. But he is a bit sad that his daughter doesn't want anything to do with him. Oh, don't be sad. I'll be your daughter. After that, he takes you under his wing to do these grand adventures. And that's pretty much it for the plot. I mean, yeah, there's that stuff with Calyrex, I guess. You see, he used to apparently rule the land of Galar. But people's faith in him has dwindled, which caused both his power to drain and his horse to run away. You confront his horse after it almost murdered someone, Jesus Christ! and he lead it back to the Crown Shrine, so they can meet and be happy together. That was not consensual. But after that, you fight him, capture him, and then release Horse and trap Calyrax in the PC box forever so he can't ever be happy again because I'm an asshole. And I know there's the roaming legendaries, Arnakuno, Zapdos, and Moltres that you have to go into different wild areas to capture. Neat idea, but now we know why the DLC weren't separate payments. Thanks, Moltres, you piece of shit. But yeah, the three OG legendary birds now got Galarian forms. That's pretty neat. The Articuno is psychic flying, and I doubt a certain Pokemon is gonna like that. I do say, this tea is rather scrumptious! <laughs> and finally, the Regis, which you have to decipher clues in order to open temples to capture them. Thankfully, no Braille included. But yeah, that's really about it for the main quest. Yeah, there's a few side quests here and there that you can do. But the real meat and potatoes is just concerning Calyrex. And that plotline is just as simple as you can get. Now, the character interactions are actually pretty good. I love how Peony is just a lovable goofball dad, and the writing is pretty good, humor side at least. There were a few jokes that gave me a good chuckle. Piana can just... go away. I don't like her. What I do like is the place that she's always hanging around at, the Dynamax Adventures, where you can team up with four players, where then you can face other Dynamax Pokemon, and finally a legendary Pokemon. However, the whole thing is randomized from the Pokemon to the Legendary itself. Now you could always give Piana some Dynamite Ore to help you find a Legendary, but I don't like her, so no. Now one thing that might turn people off is the fact that you can't bring your own Pokemon in. No, you have to rent them from a list that is also random. And when you pick a Pokemon from this said list, it rotates from another. I think it's pretty snazzy, but don't get your hopes up to find your favorite- OH MY GOD IS THAT BLAZIKIN?! I LOVE HIM! LET ME PICK HIM! LET ME PICK- Now you can capture various Pokemon in this adventure, but you can only take one of them with you. Thankfully, at the very least, it's a 100% capture rate. So stack up on a bunch of Pokeballs, because that's the cheapest option. But it also seems like you can find a bunch of shiny Pokemon here too. Even legendaries. Yeah, I both got a shiny Soul Galileo and a shiny Nekrozama. So that's something. My first legendary shinies, and they are an ugly red and a nice blue. I named them Hot Rod Red and Deep Sea Blue. Once you complete a run-through, you get an item known as Dynite, which you can use as currency to gain new items. There really isn't much of note besides the ability patch, which allows you to change regular abilities into hidden abilities. It's conceptually a great idea and allows a bunch of people to get into the competitive scene, and they allow their own Pokemon for views in past adventures to be able to be competitively viable. But uh, there's just, there's just one small problem with it. 
It's, uh... It's bugged! At the time of this recording, if you have any Pokemon ported from Generation 3 or 4, games such as Sapphire, Platinum, etc., and you said item on Pokemon from those games, like my 16-year-old Blaziken, then the game will think it's a hacked or illegal Pokemon, which means you won't be able to use them online, and there's no way to fix it. I talk a bit more about it in this video, but to the point, I cannot believe this flew under the radar, and I hope Game Free fixes this issue, because it's outrageous that they should have known to test this out in the QA department, as people are always going to be transferring those Pokemon from those games, since they have programs such as Pokemon Home and Pokemon Bank. And honestly, frankly, it just shows that they're incompetent on Game Freak's part. And I don't like the fact that I may never be able to use one of my very first Pokemon ever again online. Game Freak fixed your shit. At least the wild area is neat though. Yeah, I'm not good at segues. Even though I don't think it looks as nice as the Isle of Armor, it does give me faith that the next generation of Pokemon games will hopefully be open world. In this wild area, there is a small town and it just works. It feels like a proof of concept, but it's a decent one. And look at the adorable spiel. It's just vibing over there. Though Pokemon following you is still bloody bugged. Yeah, I can run around and have them follow me, but my Blaziken over here apparently doesn't know how to run with me. Blaziken buddy, are you okay? And finally, there's the Galar Star Tournament, which essentially is just a multi-battle Pokemon League match. And that's it. I mean, it'd be one thing we could have Ball Guy as our partner, but nope. Gotta choose one of these schmucks. Game Freak, keep Ball Guy. He's the best character. But at least this is a new option to play the Pokemon League Tournament. Why isn't there a multiplayer tournament mode? Now, to be honest, I did enjoy this DLC, and I honestly didn't expect that. Because I don't really like legendary Pokemon too much. But then again, I'm a goddamn shrill, and won't either buy or believe anything whatever Game Freak says. Just like the current Republicans in power in the Senate as they continue to follow a clown of a leader. <laughs> Political joke. However, the question is, was this worth the $30 price tag? No, I don't think so. If it was $20, then sure. I'd fully agree that you'd be getting your money's worth. But if you were to split these DLC, and were allowed to buy them separately, that'd be 15 bucks per DLC, and that sounds even more expensive compared to the $30, if you look at the contents provided. Now, I'm not against DLC, and I really hope Game Freak goes towards this in the future, but this doesn't feel like you're getting your money's worth. Sure, there's new Pokemon, and you can even catch Keldeo, and that's pretty nifty, considering the fact it's such an exclusive schmuck. Gotta hate him. Yeah, and it's neat to be able to use old Pokemon from past adventures for how long this DLC takes to make. But this feels like more of a post-game than what we got in the main game. And I don't know how I feel about that, because this feels like the post-game that we should have got in the main game in the first place. But instead, now we have to spend $30 for a post-game that should have already been in the main game. Again, if this was $20, then sure, I would say it's fine enough, but it's still a bit pricey. And I do not think it's worth spending $30 on this, unless you really care about having the full experience. Especially in this climate, with COVID and all that kind of stuff, a lot of people are short on cash. And I don't feel comfortable recommending something that costs this much when this should have been the post-game we got in the main adventure already. Maybe I'm being too hard. But my Blaziken is now screwed over, and I'm still pretty mad about that. That was 16 years. I've had him for 16. Do you know how long 16-